as always, it's such a treat for me to be here. I consider this my spiritual home. And while I'm living many miles away in Massachusetts, it is with such anticipation as the, the time approaches for me to speak that as many of you have heard this from me before, I get to think about and focus on the topic a lot. And I listened to Mary Buffo's message from last week, and I was struck with the word bond. And it came to me as we were singing the opening <coughs> song, Swing Wide the Door, that I feel such a strong bond with this community that before I step up here to speak, I will hear words that are perfect to repeat and that will really fill out what it is that I want to express about trust. And so I heard those words certainly in the prayer, in the opening prayer, but really loud because we were singing the opening song together. And so what I find is that it's really crucial for me to have some direction about where to place my trust because I've been really good in my life, very practiced and very masterful in having trust in things not working out. Any partners in here in that? You know, I won't show up someplace on time. Today it was, will I get a run in my stocking? Um, but I canceled that one. And I have a deep abiding trust that I'm supported. And so I want to take a moment before I share with you what popped out for me in the song about trust, just to have the experience of trust. And close your eyes for one moment. Take a deep breath. Focusing on your breath. And on your next out breath, surrender into the support of the seat beneath your body and the floor beneath your feet. And allow yourself to feel, to physically feel the sensations of support. And now easily and effortlessly opening your eyes. Sometimes it's challenging to really trust that God is on my side, that an affirmative prayer is an invitation to my desire, to what it is that I want to accomplish, to the result that I'm asking for. And yet, when we allow ourselves the time to notice that we are physically supported in, in this room, in the floor beneath our feet, uh, as we walk, it's by the earth that constantly supports us. And the support is as close as the seat beneath our bodies. And this support is a reflection, is a reflection of the invisible resources and support always available to us. So the question to ask yourself to be with today and this month as this community explores trust is where do you place your trust? And in Swing Wide the Doors, there were instructions about where to place our trust. I'm not holding it in anymore. I'm going to shout it out loud. I understand what I'm here for and what this life is all about. Each one of us has a particular alignment of gifts, 
talents and skills. And that's what we're here to offer, to give, to strengthen, to develop. And so when we trust, even when we're not certain what those gifts and talents and skills are, even when we question if my giving of them is of value, if we trust that they're there, the door will swing wide. And the further instructions are, it's about love. It's about laughter. It's about comfort and smiles. It's about love. It's about kindness. It's about hearts open wide. It's about love. It's about passion. It's about taking a chance. It's about love. It's about service. It's about lending a hand. About lending a hand. And when I think about the lending the hand, it's so easy for me to see that trusting that when I lend my hand to others, I can be of support. That can make a difference. That can be of service. And it's also about having the courage to lend my hand to the limitless loving energy of the universe, to lend my hand when I need the support, to lend my hand when I'm unclear about what my next step is, to lend my hand to this greater field of life that we are living in that is truly the breath of life. And yet, there are so many times in the course of a day, in the course of an hour, when our trust is being threatened, is being tempted, when we're being challenged. And it can be as simple as you can't find your keys. So you start worrying about being late. You start getting on your own case about, you know, I should have put them here. I can't remember things. What's going on? And if you focus on, if your trust is, I can't find my keys, nothing works for me, guess what? Your keys, your God, the God of our understanding is going to hear that information, that invitation that's charged with emotional energy, and even if the keys are right in front of your nose, you're not going to see them. Has anybody ever had that experience? <laughs> and then the prayer I use when something's lost, and I know there are saints who people call on when there's something lost, but the prayer that I use and have used for many years is reveal yourself. And I say it with such authority, and I've said it for so long, that now my grandchildren even say it. <laughs> and they were, I can tell you, they were extremely skeptical at first. And I want to share with you something that has really called upon my trust in the past few weeks. And the first part of sharing this is, I had questions yesterday about whether or not to share this. You know, I should maybe talk about some of the, the brilliant writers who have written about trust and give you inspiring quotes about trust. And then I realized this is the spiritual community that I trust so deeply. So this is a place for me to, I'm going to shout it out loud. I'm actually going to say it kind of softly. And, uh, but it's going to have the energy of a shout. And that is... About three weeks ago, I decided that if this is the year I'm, I'm going to have trust in my health and deal with my health and, and go to doctors, which, you know, I'm so happy to say I've been so healthy during my long life. And so I went and I had a mammogram. 
And a few days later, I got a call from my physician that you better go for an ultrasound. We found something that doesn't look right. And so I went for an ultrasound. And after that, the physician said to me, you better come in for a biopsy. And that's what I did on Friday. And I'm sharing this because this has happened over about a two and a half week period. And so my trust has really been up in terms of every so often, I wonder, how long am I going to live? What if I have a cancer diagnosis? What am I going to do then? And each time that has surfaced, what's come up for me is where are you putting your trust? Where are you putting your faith? And so sometimes I'd call someone and I'd say, remind me that God is on my side. Tell me that all is well. Or sometimes I'd say a prayer. Or sometimes I'd cry for a little while. And I share this because we are, the word that's coming to my mind is tested, but it's not a test of getting a perfect score. It's not a test of winning and losing. It's a test of where am I placing my trust? Do I believe that everything that occurs is for the highest good? Or are there certain arenas, certain components of my life that I feel, well, you know, work comes easy to me. I trust that, but I don't trust relationships. Or relationships work easily for me, but you know, money operates differently. You know, that money's real. Uh, I can't call on God for that. And so our work, and what I mean by work is where we focus our attention, is to really explore where I put my trust. And a fabulous way of exploring that is to notice the sensations going on in our bodies when we're feeling less than, when we're anxious, when we're worried, when we're afraid, and allow those sensations to give us the opportunity to acknowledge what we're feeling, to acknowledge what's going on, and then to have a new thought then to make a new choice, then to affirm that God is on our side. And not only on our sides, God is in front of us, behind us, above us, below us, is in the very air that we breathe. And so yesterday it occurred to me, well, what does it mean in this community to trust? And I didn't have any of these cards with me. And I went on the website and I read, we affirm that God expresses through us and as us. Do you believe this? Do you believe, do we believe that we are messengers? and that our words are real things. And not only make a difference in our own lives, but have an energetic vibration that impacts the collective consciousness. We affirm by knowing and practicing universal spiritual laws, we transform our consciousness and awaken to our oneness with God. Is this something you affirm? And what are universal laws? So I was thinking about that, and I thought, well, the easiest one for me to remember, which is a part of every spiritual foundation of every religion, is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And I'm struck with, it's not only doing unto others out there, 
it's doing unto those others that we sometimes feel within ourselves, the other within ourselves that we don't like, that we criticize, that we want to get rid of. So if we truly want the doors to swing open wide, for us to be all that we can be, then we have to trust that each one of us deserves to be loved. And it starts with our loving ourselves. Our relationship with ourselves is the foundation, is the blueprint for every other relationship in our life. The next affirming is, we positively affect change in our lives and in our world through love and affirmative prayer. As I listen to Nick's opening prayer, he was affirming, he was affirming that peace is in our lives. And so what do we affirm? What if every word we say is a prayer? What if every word we say is an invitation to the God of our understanding, to the limitless energy of the universe of what we're affirming? When we think of it that way, our words really matter. And our words turn in to matter. And the last one is, our awareness of divine presence is evolving and re we remain open to refining our beliefs. This is a journey. It's not a destination. And if you have ever, like me, thought that you have arrived, you know, I get this now, well, then you can be pretty sure you will have the opportunity to see that there's another door to swing open wide. And so I have just a few more minutes. And I, there's a poem that I found this week by Pablo Neruda. And because I think it's another instruction about how to live, where to place our trust. You start dying slowly if you do not travel, if you do not read, if you do not listen to the sounds of life, if you do not appreciate yourself. You start dying slowly when you kill your self-esteem, when you do not let others help you. You start dying slowly if you become a slave to your habits, walking every day on the same paths if you do not change your routine, or you do not wear different colors, or you do not speak to those you do not know. You start dying slowly if you avoid to feel passion and its turbulent emotions those that make your eyes glisten and your heart beat fast. You start dying slowly when you do not change your life, when you are not satisfied with your job or with love or your surroundings. If you do not risk what is safe for the uncertain, if you do not go after a dream, if you do not allow yourself at least once in your lifetime to run away from the sensible. So when you trust the support of the seat beneath your body, of the earth beneath your feet, of this eternal presence of love, the energy of the universe that we live in, if you don't trust that, then we do die slowly. And so in closing, I'm curious to see how many of you have trusted 
that I'd have a gift for you today <laughs> in a physical form. So, I do. And I just want to say one thing about that before Keelan sings what I am certain will be the most perfect song in the most amazing voice. And that is, this is a charm that I encourage you to endow with whatever you need to expand and deepen your trust that you are, that we are each mighty expressions of love in the world. Thank you. Thank you.